the fourth question from my friend the seeker, and here it is. In the West, we are told, or we are often told, that Islamic Sharia law approves of flogging, of stoning, of chopping of body parts, of hanging, and of beheading. Is that so? And does that mean that all these practices are and will and should be practiced in a truly Islamic society? Well, first of all, my friend, Seka, let me correct you. You don't belong to the West. You belong to the East. Orthodox Christianity is Eastern. Western Christianity is the one which has allied itself with the Zionist Jews. So you do not belong to the West. So we may have this question in this way. Does the Sharia of Islam approve of flogging and this and that and the other? No, it's not a question of approval or disapproval. Not at all. We have a book, a divinely revealed scripture, and it declares that it is the word of the one God. Mankind, whether you be Christian or Jew or Hindu or Buddhist or whoever you may be, mankind has to take a decision. And that decision has to be taken before you die. Is this a valid claim that this book makes? That it is the word of the one God. The book says, examine this book when you decide whether or not it is the word of God and use the rational faculty with which you have been endowed. There is only one copy of the Quran in the whole world. 1,400 years have passed, and you cannot find two different versions of the Quran. No. And the Quran declares of itself that it is divinely protected. No one can change it. So here is evidence with which to commence the study that this book certainly has some credentials in it. That there are no two versions of the Quran, even though 1,400 years have passed. Is there any other book in history like that? Any other book? This is the only one in the entire human history which has survived for 1,400 years intact without any change. No two versions of this book exist, only one. And this book, which says it has come from the one God, this book has brought with it laws from the one God. So it's not a question of we approving or disapproving of anything. Rather, it is, is this the law of God, yes or no? And when the Quran says, this is the law, then that's it. Whether mankind approves of it, whether mankind is comfortable with it or not, is not our business at all. We don't care a fig leaf about whether somebody approves of God's law or disapproves of it, is comfortable with God's law or is com not comfortable with it. That's not our business at all. Our business is to say, is this the word of God? Yes or no? Come and make your mind. Check, check out the book. And when you check out the book and you come to the conclusion that it is the word of God, then you've got to submit to it. Whether you understand it or you don't, whether you are comfortable with it or you are not, it is the word of God, you submit to it. That's the Muslim view. Not a question of approval or disapproval. The human mind does not sit in judgment over the word of God. Let's talk about flogging. And let's talk about stoning. Where did it come from? Stoning. Stoning to death. Did it come from the Quran? No, it does not. 
It didn't come from the Quran. It came from the Torah. It came from the previous revelation. But the Western hypocritical world never talks about that. When they talk about barbarian punishment, it's there in the Torah. The people who commit adultery must be stoned to death. That's there in the Torah. And when the Quran came down, the Quran changed that law. And the new law from the one God who sent the previous law also sent the new law. And he changed the old law of stoning to death. And he replaced it with a new law of a public flogging. If you are uncomfortable with that, then you don't have to accept it. But don't tell us that our law has to meet with your approval. None at all. That's rubbish. Our law doesn't have to meet with the approval of anybody, Tom, Dick, or Harry. That's Islam. If it came from God, we submit to it. And the law in the Quran, whether they like it or they don't, the law in the Quran is that if you commit fornication or adultery, it is no longer the old law of Moses which is stoning to death. It is now the new law of a public flogging. Or take the question of cutting off for the hand of the thief. Because Islam insists, as absolutely insists, on the establishment and the maintenance of a free and fair market, the absolute insistence on the establishment and the maintenance of a free and a fair market. That is why the Lord God has prescribed, cut off the hand of the thief, because what that thief is doing is destroying the fair market. You do not cut off the hand of a thief if he steals a mango. No. You cut off the hand of a thief when he steals something of some value. If we were to apply that law today, how many hands would there be in lower Manhattan? There are very few hands in lower Manhattan because that's where the world banking system is established. From there, the banking system rules the world. And the banking system today is the equivalent of the thief. Imagine a bank is lending money that the bank does not have. Hmm? Is that dishonesty? I don't have money, but I'm lending you money. Is that honesty or is that dishonesty? It's called fractional reserve banking. That you could lend money that you don't have. And so when payback time comes and they want the money, you've got to run quickly to take a loan to pay because you don't have the money. It's bogus. It's fraudulent. They are legalized thieves. That's what it is. And so if we had Islam in the world today and we have the law applied of chopping off the hand of the thief, you would quickly be able to restore a fair market. And lots of these people who today are called corrupt people, the corrupt, the oligarchs who are ripping off the state, ripping off the people, would quickly, quickly, quickly have to come to their senses. Otherwise, they lose their hands. So don't sit down comfortably in an armchair and pronounce a bogus opinion that this is a barbarian law. And don't make a fool of yourself. Because the Lord God is more sensible than those who say that this is a barbarian law. Because your society is riddled with corruption. Your market is a shameful market. People are being ripped off every day. And Islam gives a law to restore a free and a fair market, cutting off the hand of the thief. And you consider that to be barbarian? No. These are the laws of Islam, but they're not applied today. Why? Because those who rule the world take control of our government. If we were to apply the law which has come from God, 
we'll establish a society which will be quite different from that which obtains in the world today. It will be a society of security. Security of person, security of property. A society of peace and a society of justice. But it'll come when Jesus returns. It will come when Jesus returns and all of these tin pot dictators are swept away when the true Messiah returns and peace and justice is restored in the world and the law of God is restored.